It's Bourbonite. Hello, I'm Chad, and I am graciously in uh, <laughs> in your whiskey room here. This is Jason C. from the Mash and Drum. Welcome to your own place, Jason. Yeah, Welcome. thank you for coming to my own place. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. We get the chance to see each other on barrel picks and stuff like that. But yeah. It's always cool to kind of, you know, see the studios and stuff. You know, for behind sure. the scenes, you know. Yeah, next time you'll have to come yeah, to their studio. Yeah, I definitely have to, yeah, come to their studio. Yeah, exactly. When did you get into this whole whiskey tube thing? What year was it? 20, 2018. 18? Okay. It was my first year. Is it less fun to be a bourbon drinker nowadays than it was back then? I think it's less fun to, uh, yeah, it's definitely a lot less fun to hunt down different bottles. Um, as you know, the secondary market and the resale market has become such a thing and it's become such a, um, a revenue stream for people personally. Everybody has their trick. They'll go, they'll jump to stores, they have a network of people that'll wait online, get bottles, and then, I mean, before they're even back in their car, they're already on there waiting to flip them. Crotch shots. Yeah, crotch shots, uh, trunk shots, uh, literally walking right out of the liquor store shot. Yep. And posting it right up there. I think that part of it has kind of ruined it a bit, obviously, because the people that actually want to drink the stuff aren't getting it. I mean, they're getting it eventually, but they're getting it for a much more inflated price. Um, but I also will say, I've met some of the coolest people waiting on lines. It's not even like people that like know my channel or anything. It's just people that I talk to that are whiskey enthusiasts. And, you know, generally the people are trying to get these bottles to, you know, to drink and enjoy themselves or especially around the holidays, people are trying to find gifts to give like their dad or their brother or, you know, sometimes even their wife that's into whiskey or their, um, you know, their grandmother. Uh, I ran into one guy that was trying to find a blends for his grandma, which is kind of cool. Wow. So, uh, so you get into those conversations and, you know, you meet some really amazing people and, you you know, even the people that are, you know, flipping a lot of the whiskeys aren't all bad. I mean, you know, it, it's obviously part of the scene that we deal with, but it's in every scene. I deal with it with sneakers. Yeah. It's hit every popular market that we can think of. Um, it's just the people that take it to a level where it's almost uh, dangerous and it, and it gets to a point where they will do anything to secure a bottle or bottles of one whiskey to make that extra buck. And, and just kind of ruin the, the experience for people. I think just as bad is the person who will do th those same measures, mm -hmm. but instead of to make a buck, it's just so they can line them up in their stock, in their back stock. Yeah. And they'll probably never even open the one in the front. But yeah. status symbol, status symbol, status symbol right behind it. It's the same bottle right behind it. Look how deep I am in BTAC or whatever. Yeah, that, that plays into what I was saying before about the people that just, they, they get these bottles and don't open them and they'll literally just use it as like a background. And like, yeah. I, I've seen this one dude that has, I mean, he is at least 20 tubes deep of King of Kentucky. Like how in the world does that happen? First, how can you afford it? Yeah. Two, how do you, yeah, the logistically, how do yeah. you get that many? Logistically, how do you get that many? Like, it's either a liquor store owner and that's just like gobbling them up and flipping them. But yeah, it, it's it's just, it's it's crazy. I mean, some of the, some of the stuff that people can acquire, um, but then it's also the flip side. You get guys that they find like that one, like, uh, you know, like for, for instance, Old Forester 1924, which we talked about earlier. When that first started dropping on the market, mm -hmm. that's a hundred and fifteen dollar bottle that people were selling for three fifty immediately. And yeah, I'll tell you in the you know spoiler alert, it's not worth three fifty. It's barely <laughs> worth one fifteen. Yes. So please don't overpay for it. But uh, yeah, that's the thing. But, people yeah. will drop this having never even tried it. Yeah, yeah. But it, again, setting themselves up for. But yeah, but it's that thing where they just want the bottle because they can either just say they have it. Um, you know, you want to think that most people are buying it to consume. It's hard because you know people are just shelling out so much money and they, they might just want to be putting it on their shelf. It's, Some people have more money than sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's the kind of the new bourbon drinker that's come into the fold uh, recently where it's they, they've taken on bourbon as a hobby. They have a lot of cash, a lot of, you know, a lot of income, a lot of, you know, money to burn. Yeah. And they don't really care what they pay. They'll just say, hey, I got all these great bottles. Look what I have. You know, you'd like to think that they're sharing it and drinking it, but... From the majority of people that I've met like that, they're not. Meanwhile, when we, uh, <laughs> you know, publish our top ten bourbons of the year, we'll get these comments that say, "Oh, this is just a flex. It's open. We're drinking it. We don't have fifteen deep 
but you're calling this a flex? Especially when it was done blind. Uh, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's a topic that I, I'm still trying to figure out. Uh, people are probably like, you talk about it too much, but, um, I... No, it's not, I mean, I get I, some of those comments too. I mean, I, you know, it, it's tough because, but again, I'm willing to pay the extra for the bottle or pay the full price for the bottle. Now, it's one thing when you say it's a flex, this, these are bottles that the average person can't get. And yeah, while there's some level to that that I agree with, are you the type of drinker though that's going out and looking for these for these bottles? Are you endlessly like, I'll travel to different states to try to get some bottles. I have a network of people that help me get them. So it's a little bit different, but I'm still willing to pay the price to get that bottle. Mm -hmm. it's, a different, it's a different type of buyer than someone that just wants to go into a liquor store and see something on the shelf. Like for that, you know, there's other videos that we've done about non-allocated bottles. Yeah, plenty. Bottles of plenty of those. And, you know, in today's time, there are so many good bottles. Yeah. Right? That are available on the shelf. You don't really have to go and get these allocated stuff. Listen, I'll say if I didn't review whiskey, most of my purchases would probably be available stuff and store picks only. Same. I probably wouldn't chase <laughs> most of the hard-to-get stuff, to be honest. No. I mean, I would probably find a good price at a bar to get a pour of it so I can have an opinion about it. Yeah. I say most people, if you're, you know, if you consider yourself a certain level of being into whiskey, I feel like you should go and pay that $50, $60, $75. Maybe it's on a special occasion and you can kind of chalk it up to that. But if you want to be able to weigh in about Pappy Van Winkle, whether it's overrated or not, yeah. you know, instead of just asking people, get a pour of it at a bar and decide for yourself, be able to weigh in about it or BTAC or whatever it is. It's, yeah. Have it. So you can say you have it, so you can form an opinion on it. Maybe then you don't go try and hunt down a bottle. That's fine, but at least you've had it and you've had the experience. Yeah, and I love that about going to bars and seeing people's reactions. If you go to a bar and you see Pappy Van Winkle or something um, at a decent price and you're willing to spend the money on a pour, I always tell them, have the bartender pour you something that you like to drink often, whether it's, you know, Eagle Rare, Rare Breed, whatever it is, any mm -hmm. available bottle that you enjoy and put the Pappy Van Winkle next to it and then have them pour it blind and then give it to you yeah. and then try it. Because I think what happens a lot is they put people put that Pappy in front of them and they drink it and no matter what it tastes like, this is the best thing I've ever had. Of course, yeah. And I understand it's part of the experience mm -hmm. because I think that's part of it too, is the friends you're with, yep. the environment you're in, all, of that, play, all of that Completely. plays into having or making that specific whiskey special to someone. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And and it doesn't make you wrong for thinking this is the best thing I've ever had because you're yeah. adding up all these external elements plus the whiskey. Yeah. Uh, so it might be. And there's nothing wrong with yeah. that. Yeah. If someone if someone comes up to me and tells me, hey look, I, I got a you know, I got a lot B and but I was with friends, I opened it at a wedding and we cracked it open. Best thing I ever had. I believe you. It probably yes, was. It probably was. Because in that moment, mm -hmm. it probably was the best whiskey I've ever tried. And no. I'm not I'm not going to judge anybody for no. that. I'm actually more happy that they cracked it open. Absolutely. Good, <laughs> good, good on good you. Good on you. Good, yeah. yeah. Jason, if people don't know about you and your channel, let them know where they can follow you, where they can subscribe to you. Yeah, uh, just go to the Mash and Drum on YouTube. You can subscribe there to the channel. Really appreciate it again. Uh, if I haven't mentioned it a hundred times already, I'm trying to hit a hundred uh, 100k here subscribers just like uh, these guys um, and you can find me at the Master and Drum on Instagram uh, I've also just recently launched a podcast uh, it's really nothing crazy honestly it's just really my videos in audio form so if people do listen in the car they can listen to my uh, to my videos in the car as well and that's available on Podbean if you guys are interested and uh, yeah, that's about it well thanks so much thanks for having me over yeah, this was Appreciate awesome it. Love the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Have to do this again soon. Till next time, drink more bourbon. Cheers. I get the last word. Not you. What, you what the?